What's up guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a countdown in Swift. Uh, all I've done so far is created a couple labels uh, that's really easy to do. I'm expecting that you know how to do this. If not, you can look at a different tutorial. And all I've done is create an outlet. Uh, what we're going to do here at the top is actually just create something called a formatter. And it's just going to be an NS8 formatter. And we're just going to create an instance of that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is get the user's calendar. And the reason for this you'll see in a little bit. We're just going to say NS calendar, not current calendar. Uh, this next part isn't going to make a lot of sense at right now, maybe, but basically in here we're putting the components we want. So month, day, hour, minute, second, which usually, unless it's more than a year away, uh, most of this won't make sense. In our case, it's a Christmas thing, so a year does not make sense. So in our view did load, we're going to do something here in a minute. Actually, we're going to create a different function first. So we're going to create a function called print time. And as you could imagine, this is going to print the time to that label we hooked up. So the first thing we need to do in our print time is use that formatter to say what the format is going to be. So our date format. And what this is, is just a string of what the date is going to look like, how you enter it. And so a big thing to pay attention to here is the capital M's versus little m's. Big M's is month, little m's is minutes and uh, that will cause problems in your app and not necessarily one that the compiler will tell you. Uh, what we're going to do now is say what the end time is and also the start time. The start time is going to be exactly now so all we have to do is put NS date and at all times we want it to be that and at the end time we want that to be the formatter and then we want a string from a date or we want a date from string. So we're going to do date from string. And then the string is actually just going to be whatever the date you want is. So in our case, it's going to be Christmas. And that's going to be of 2016. And the time is going to be 12 AM. So it is the very beginning of the day. OK. And actually, I'm going to get rid of that screen. Sorry about that. So view controller. We are good in time. And you're seeing we're getting some um, errors for not using it yet. And then what we need to do is get the time difference between the two. So we're going to say let time difference equals. And this is where things are going to probably be something you may not have seen before. We're going to take the calendar we created up here, which is just the current calendar. And then we're going to say dot components. And then we want from date to date with the options and uh, so we're going to pick the one it's on right now and the unit flags that's actually what we created here and that may be something you may not have seen before so we're going to say requested components those are the units we want to use so we're going to say from date well that we already said that's going to be our start time and then to date that's going to be our end time and as you see i'm actually going to pull that back out so if i click in there you see that it has to be they're getting trying to take it from us but basically they're showing that uh, it's, it's a string optional going in is what end time is. And we can actually see that if we option click in NS date. So what we're going to do to fix that is put the exclamation mark. And if this was a real app, you may want to do something like an if let statement with some error catching because you'll probably want to do something different if something did go wrong. And then the options, we don't have any. So we're just going to put basically an empty array of options. And so that way it knows. And now that we have our time difference, we're going to take our label. So we're going to say date label outlet and set the text equal to the time difference. And basically, you can't just put time difference. You have to put a whole lot more. So what I'm going to do is actually copy it over. So let me grab that real quick. And it will look just like this. Basically, you're going to have to get each point. So you're going to get need to get the month, the day, the minute, the second. And you can do that just like I did, but for sake of time, I'm going to cut that out. And here's what we're going to do. In the view did load now, we're just going to make sure everything worked. So we're going to see if everything did actually tell us how far from now till Christmas. Wait for the simulator to boot up. So now, of course, it's a six plus because Apple loves putting that as the screen. So we'll make that 50% the size so it looks okay. And what you're seeing now is absolutely nothing. 
And what you're seeing is it had a nil while unwrapping an optional value. Because we forgot to put seconds. See, so this is actually kind of what I mean. So we had an error there because we didn't do something right. And if you were getting your date from a server or something, that would be like a critical issue. And as you literally see, that wouldn't have happened if I put in it flat. It would have just not done anything for the program. And so now you see that it did an impact update. So you probably noticed the time wasn't changing and obviously that's not good. So what we're going to do is create a timer. So I'm just gonna say let timer equal NS timer. And basically what this is gonna do is it's just going to run over and over again unless you tell it to stop. But in our case, we will not be telling it to top, stop. And we're gonna do one second. The target is gonna be our cell. The selector, so this is something they actually recently changed. You can't just put like a string anymore. So we'll say selector. And then we're gonna say print time. And Apple's gonna try to put the uh, well, parentheses afterwards, but you, you can't put them in on the selector. It, it won't understand what you're talking about. And then the user info, that's going to be nil, and the repeats is true. We want it to repeat over and over again. So now, what it's going to do is every second, it's going to call this function here. Uh, but we have to tell it to start, so we will say timer.fire. And now as you can see, this is actually gonna update and I'll let it go the 10 seconds so you can actually see the minutes change as well. It's really nice because by saying to go horizontal, it'll actually update the size and everything as the time goes from double digits down to one. And as you'll see, it'll go back to 59 and 43. So everything's working out right and I hope this helped and please leave a like or comments on how I can make these videos better.